Or the first year, you'd save $682 a month on your mortgage payment, as opposed to 90, as opposed to 90, okay? The second year, you're gonna save 467. Okay. Opposed yeah, to 90. Opposed to 90. Real estate. Well, here I am, Steve Martin Smith, on location once again with Tony Moore at Golfside Mortgage. And we're going to talk about what? The real estate market and mortgages. Why would anybody expect anything different from us? But that's what they need to hear. And they need to hear from you today, Tony. Absolutely. There's a lot going on out there. There's a lot of reasons why people think that now is not a good time to buy, but it could be the best time ever for some people. For many people, actually. And, you know, it's January 10th, and my phone has really started ringing more in the last two days than it has in the last two months. Because November through the first week of January, really mid-November through the first week of January, is the slowest time in real estate, at least around here. Okay, that's been my experiences for the past eight years. The same thing year after year after year. That... You know, people have other things to focus on. They don't want to get involved in negotiating and contracts and moving and all that unless they absolutely have to. So although obviously there's still sales that do happen, you're still writing mortgages, I'm still writing contracts, it's a smaller amount, at least for me it has been. Has that been true for you as well historically? Uh, It has. In in January, historically, is always one of the slowest months of the year. And uh, the reason why I think that is is because everybody's trying to get in the house before the end of the year. Uh, First of all, we have homestead um, laws here, which our homestead gives us uh, discounts if you own the home by January 1st. So everybody tries to get in before January 1st. Right. And second, the the ones that are trying to buy, um, they don't want to buy during the holidays. So that usually keeps the January closings to a minimum. Yes, yes. I, I definitely I see that in my world, and uh, it's obvious why you see it in yours as well. But, uh, I mean, even today, I received a new phone call from somebody who's just been, you know, kind of waiting for the holidays to get over, and now they're ready to start looking, you know, brand new customer. Uh, at the moment, I don't know if they're going to be a mortgage yet, so I don't know if I'll be talking to you about <laughs> them or not, but, you know, I will be if they are. And, and like, even open houses are starting to break loose. Um, the last, I had an open house last Sunday and, uh, it has, it was definitely the most active open house I've been in since February, March of 2020. Oh, wow. All right. Cause I mean, open houses at that time, you know, a lot of people were becoming afraid to have them. They didn't want all the strangers in their house and whatnot because of all the unknowns. Uh, and, and then once the market you know, really started moving like it had for two years. Houses were going off the market so fast. I listed on Friday hoping to get a, a Saturday open house because on the market a day and it's under contract, mm-hmm. you know. But, uh, but things are feeling very normal out there in my world as far as, you know, days on the market, the amount of people coming in to look at houses. I, mean, I feel like I'm, you know, kind of gone a little back in time to 2018, 2019, uh, when things were good, people were, they, they had choices with their houses, right? They'd, they'd call me and they'd say, hey, Steve, I'm going to be down here next week for three days. What can you show me? And I might be able to show them, you know, 10, 15 houses in their criteria. And they had choices. Mm-hmm. They could make offers and negotiate and come to win-win situations. And, and to me, that was enjoyable real estate. You know, the last couple of years, that was that was brutal in so many ways for so many people because of the anxiety level of I'm going in up against, you know, 10, 15, 20 other offers. And if I don't give everything I got, there's no chance and I still may not get it. Yeah. You know, I actually like to compare that to uh, shoe shopping. So, oh, okay. you know, Let's talk when, about shoes. When, when you go out and go shoe shopping, you actually get to go out, you get to try a pair of shoes on, you get to walk down the, the little aisle with it, mm-hmm. you get to see if it feels comfortable, you get to try another pair of shoes, and you get to figure out which one's your favorite, not just your favorite color, right. but the one that fits you the best. I mean, you're not going to take a shoe if they walk up and they go, hey, I only have a size 11, but I wear a size 12. You're not going to say, oh, well, go ahead and give me the 11. Yeah. But in the real estate market seven months ago, People were taking size nines when they wore size twelves. <laughs> they, they would take one, they would take the last pair of shoes that was on the shelf because that's all there was. Right. So I mean, nowadays, I mean, you started to mention it there. We're back to almost what's a normal market, and a lot of people are still scared to buy. But now's actually a great time to buy. Yes. We're seeing that there's more inventory out there, just like you mentioned. We're seeing that you have time to shop. 
mm-hmm. and find the house that fits your needs and what you want. You're able to negotiate good terms and prices right. on the house today compared to seven months ago. I was talking to another realtor that they literally went in and offered $70,000 above asking price, which means above value. Right. They waived their finance contingency. They waived their appraisal. They waived their home inspection, and they still didn't win the deal. Wow. Right. So what was the offer that won the deal? Well, I don't, I, we don't yeah. know that. But I don't know what ended up winning, but I do crazy. know that they were still 70000 over. They waived all their rights as a buyer, mm-hmm. gave out all the, everything to the seller, and we're getting nothing in return. Yeah. And you know, that's bad real estate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hated seeing that. And I was I was part of some of those deals. You know, and, and it's like I, I would tell my customer, you don't have to do an inspection, and that may help you get your offer accepted, but just be prepared. You know, I mean, there could be things wrong with this property that you were not seeing. And it's mm-hmm. like, I don't care. I, I need the house that looks great. I'm doing it. And without a home inspection, I mean, you could buy, be, literally buy a house or – or find out the house is falling down. Yeah. But because you waive that right, you're losing your earnest money deposit yeah. or possibly other more. You right. know, that would be more on your side to talk about. Yeah. Um, but now we have the ability to go back out there. We have this, the ability to shop. We have the ability to look for stuff. We have the ability to find a good house at the value of what it's really supposed to be. Yes. You know, a lot of times now, and I'm talking to a lot of people, I said, look, now we want to we want to go out there and find that great deal and find a good deal. But maybe not just always ask under asking price. Because the one thing that you, you do when you ask for less than, let's say you go and you find a house for 500000 you say, hey, we would like to ask 10000 under asking price or 20000 under the actual value of the house because you're going to do your investigation as being a realtor. Right. You're going to find out that it's really worth that and there's plenty of comps. But if you ask for less than full value, you're actually bringing down the values of the neighborhood. That's true. If you go in and you get the house for four eighty, but it's really worth five hundred, you lost twenty thousand dollars on the value of your property because you're bringing down the values of the properties. Right, right. So there's actually an alternative right now, and this is something that we want to talk about. That you can go out there and still ask for full price, keep the value of your house where it's supposed to be, because mm-hmm. we know the value's there. You right. just might be able to find a good deal because there's not as many buyers right now. Right. Where before there was a lot of buyers. And that's, um, that's with using seller concessions to help you with your mortgage payment. Right. So it's right? costing you less money, but on record, it costs what a little bit more. Right. right. On record, you're still buying the, the property for the full, let's say, 500000 right. in this example. So how does it cost you less money? Okay. So um, that was the lead in. That, that was, was the lead in. So yeah. that's a perfect question. So let's just say that you found a house and you're looking at the house and it's 500000 And today the rates are higher, right? We didn't talk about rates yet, but we'll get into it. The rates are higher. And right now um, they're, they're in the lower sixes, low to mid sixes right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, in October, we were as high as 8% at one point. And they've come down a little bit. They're starting to settle down. I'll tell you why in a minute. But let's go out there and say, hey, we found this house. And let's say the rate's six and a quarter today. Let's just use that. So instead of going in and saying, hey, let me offer you 20000 less, and at six and a quarter, $20,000 off the purchase price, you're looking at saving maybe $80, $90 a month. Uh, on your mortgage. On your mortgage payment. Right. With 20% down by, by reducing the purchase price by 20000 and reducing the value of your property. Okay, got it. So about 80 90 savings right now with that scenario. Yep. Okay. Let's just say 90 Okay. But if you took just... 16,000 of that money. Um, and this is what's called a buy down. It's a, there's a two, one buy down and a three, two, one buy down. Let's use the example of a three, two, one buy down. Okay. And we're going to use $16,000 of that money. And today's rate at being six and a quarter, you would actually for the first year get a rate of 3.25, 3% below what the rate would really be. So that's like almost half, almost half. Right. The second year, it goes up to 2% below, and the third year goes to 1% below. So it goes from 3.25 the first year, 4.25 the next year, 5.25 the next year, and if you were to keep the mortgage for four years, it would go back to the 6.25, which is, is today. Okay. okay. But let's say that we take that $16,000 that we get a seller concession, so you're still getting a great deal. Right. So instead of knocking sixteen grand off the price of the house, you're taking the sixteen thousand dollars, or the seller is. Yep. It's taking that sixteen thousand dollars. They're buying this benefit for you. Correct. The okay. three, two, one buy down. Right. And on that, 
Uh, just to give you some numbers on that, the first year you would say, or the first year you'd save six hundred eighty-two dollars a month on your mortgage payment, as opposed to ninety. As opposed to ninety. Okay. The second year you're going to save four hundred sixty-seven. Okay. Opposed to ninety. Opposed to ninety. The third year you're going to save two hundred and forty. Opposed to ninety. Opposed to ninety. <laughs> Right? right now, the fourth year we're back to where it's going to be, and we're back closer to where it would have been. Um, but we expect rates to drop. Right, we've already talked about in October they were up close to eight percent. Since October they've dropped, they've come down, they've come down. They're now close to six and a quarter. Let's say somewhere in that range. Okay. And um, the Feds are expecting to continue to raise the federal exchange rate. So when the Feds raise a rate, they're not touching our mortgage rates. They're changing, a, uh, they're raising a rate that's the federal exchange to banks. When they do that, they're helping control inflation. When inflation slows down, our deficit's still through the roof, right? And rates are going to have to drop. When we spend money, the government makes money. When rates are lower, we spend more. Right. That's why since the 80s, we've seen lower and lower rates. We've never seen the deficit go down since the 80s, it's only gone up. Yeah. And right now, it's at a record. So what we expect to happen and what most of the economists are expecting to happen is between now and let's say October to December, they expect rates to get somewhere in the fours okay. by the end of the year. Yeah. And we could see, we could see the beginning of next year, the first quarter or half of next year, because inflation will stop by then and there will be no more inflation. And the deficit is 31 point trillion, 31 and a half trillion dollars right now, which is some number we don't even want to think about. Yeah. When that happens, rates will lower, and we probably will likely see all new time low interest rates, meaning sometime in 2024, we could see rates back in the mid twos. What a great time to refi. What a great time to refi. Yeah. And you do a program like this, you get the house that you love, yeah. and we know what's going to happen when rates drop again. We're going to have the same effect as before. Everybody's going to be buying again. Everybody's going to buy. Right. The inventory is already low. The inventory is still low, right? Yeah, and the inventory is going to stay low. And the inventory is going to stay low. Yeah. And when rates get back down in the fours, they're going to be even lower inventory. Yeah. Because people that were buying, you know, we didn't lose those people that were buying seven, eight months ago. They just stopped buying. Right. They're, they're still there. They still want to be here. They still want to be there. They right. still want to buy. Yeah. Whether it's coming here from somewhere else or they're renting and they're tired of renting and, you know, they're just trying to figure out how they can get into a home, you know, that they own. Yep. Those all those people are still there, and new house uh, household formations, meaning the children, our children that turn thirty one years of age or older, that's the average first time home buyer. Yeah, they need a house to live in. Right. There's a lot of formations of families that are out there. Yeah. So there's still a lot of people that need to buy homes, and this is the good time right now. I think we're going to look back like almost like we did in 2010, not quite as good. Yeah. But we're going to look back in three or four years and say, hey, we should have bought a house. In the beginning of 2022, the end of 20, or sorry, the end of 2022, sure. beginning of 2023. Right. When the buyers backed off and there was a better opportunity to actually get some negotiating done Correct. as you're putting the contract together. Now, before we go on from here, I've been holding this thought, trying not to forget it. <laughs> and all those numbers that you put out, like, you know, the 600 and something you save a month in the first year, all the way down to the two something the, the third year. Did you actually do the math to find out what that three year savings? I did. What is it? So that three-year savings is actually the $16,661.56. Oh, that's the 16000 Which is the seller concession. So the oh. seller is literally paying that part of your mortgage payment for you, which okay. is so much more impact. Right. Because let's say there's another option you have that's called a seller buy-down. The seller buy-down is where the seller still gives you the seller concession. You buy down your fixed rate to a lower fixed rate. So let's say you're at six and a quarter, but when you buy that down and you 16000 you're only going to be able to buy it down to about 5.75. Okay. So now you're locked in at that 5.75 for 30 years. Yeah. So it's, it's a fixed rate, and some people might be com more comfortable with that than something that could go up, but you know exactly what it goes up to. Right. But let's say rates do drop down to four and a quarter by the end of the year. You're going to want to refinance. You're going to refinance anyway. And guess what happens with that money when you do just do a buy down? What? The bank keeps it. Guess what happens with this money when we do a three, two, one buy down and you don't use it because you refinance before the loan gets to the, the six and a quarter you started at? Uh, what happens? You get the money as principal reduction. 
that money goes towards your principal on your property. You don't lose the money on a three, two, one buy down like you would if you did a rate buy down with the lender. Ah, so it's like a win, 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 win. Tri it's a win. it's a triple win. Everybody wins. <laughs> oh. The seller wins. The buyers win. I mean, everybody's winning. Your value of your house stays up. You win because of that. I mean, there's so many things that that win. Your neighbors win right. because you didn't negotiate down to a super low price and drop the value of everybody. So if everybody you use this antic and this 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 program right now, it would help everybody. Right. Unless you're not a believer, rates are going to drop. Well, uh, okay. Or if you're the skeptic out there thinking that you're selling this idea because you want the refi, what is it that you do for your customers that come to you for a mortgage to begin with that then need to refi? That's a great question. I know the answer, by the way, but <laughs> you need to know the answer. So we actually did start a program uh, because we do believe and we know that rates are going to drop, right? Uh, this is something that we've always done for all of our clients anyway, and we always do. Right. Our goal is to put people into houses. We're not a refinance company. Mm -hmm. We refinance maybe 16% of our transactions. Some companies out there are 80, 90%. Um, we're not. We, we help people purchase homes, and that's what we do. So what we want to do is help you. Uh, we we want to be your debt advisor. And being a debt advisor, we want to help you refinance or take care of what it can to help you get less debt. So what we're doing is we're doing a 36-month guarantee from the time you purchase that home, and it's only gonna last till rates get lower because we can't do it after that, Right. that if rates drop, we will pay for your appraisal, we'll pay for your out-of-pocket expenses, um, and we'll put you into a lower rate for basically nothing out of your pocket. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some fees that get rolled into the loan. We can't pay for the doc stamps and intangible taxes from the county. We yeah. can't pay for some title fees. Uh, but we're gonna pay anything that's out-of-pocket for, for you, which means an appraisal. Right? We're going to pay $500 out of our pocket to get you an appraisal as long as we can get you qualified because we want to get you in the house when the time's good, right? and we want to get you into a new low fixed rate payment when that time comes for as little as possible. Yeah, that's awesome. That's like a great commercial right there. That could be a commercial. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see if I can get that snipped out of there and do something with that for you. <laughs> Because, no, I, you know, that's what everybody thinks. Yeah, of course you're talking about refis. Look at all the money you're going to make on the refis. And in this particular case, you're saying, no, we're actually not going to make money on the refis. No. You're going to have to spend a little bit for things that you can't pay that we for. can't control. Can, you know, county, state laws mm -hmm. and things like that. But but you're not putting money in your pocket out of it. No. So We're looking to cover our cost and, yeah. you know, get, get it done and get you taken care of. I mean, right. that's what it's about. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's beautiful. I love that. It is some good stuff, and we do really expect rates to go down uh, <laughs> over the next over the next eighteen months. Yeah. You know, and you had uh, you you told me something. I'd love for you to to share it again. Uh, you told me about how driving at night was like the market right now. I loved I love that. I thought that was oh, great. Oh, let me see what what. <sighs> I'm trying to. It's remember. the best time to drive was at night because. Oh. Right. Yeah, I loved I loved when you said that. Okay. Yeah, and that was just kind of a, a thought that I had at the time we were talking. I haven't shared it again since then. Uh, but you know, the idea that uh, a lot of a, a lot of times we don't want to drive at night because uh, I mean it's just easier to like run into things that you may not be able to see a deer run across the road or or whatever. And so we think about those things. But the fact is, when the majority of the people aren't on the road you really have a lot easier drive. There's less people you're contending with. There's less people to, to compete for wherever it is you're trying to go. And, uh, and that's you know the same way with buyers right now. There were so many buyers. And we were talking about this a few minutes ago, so I don't wanna go too big into it, but it was an insane amount of buyers per house. Yep. Right? And right now we're not seeing that. I mean, I did get you know a couple dozen people through my open house on Sunday. None of them have written an offer. So for the person who wants to write an offer right now, you don't have, whether it's my house or anybody's house, you don't have to just have this weight on your shoulders that you're going to be in this intense rush hour traffic scenario. Uh, and and something that this is reminding me of is a phone call that I received last week from a customer who missed the boat in 2019. Okay, they, they called me about one of my listings that was still active, and they did not 
Uh, they did not feel like they should make an offer on that house at that time. Uh, but they were talking to their agent about it. So they called me even though they had their own agent. So I didn't get too involved. And they didn't make an offer and went under contract. And it was just a few months later that all of a sudden we're in a traffic jam. Mm. And so since that time, you know, uh, the couple is still, they've looked at some things. They're on the other side of the state. They come over once in a while and, and they just have felt like there's just too much congestion, too many people trying to buy right now. I don't want to get involved with that is what they say. So now it has calmed down. You know, the things in his MLS portal, we're seeing some price reductions, right? And so he knows that that's kind of happening. So I, I shoot him off a listing that I saw that I thought, you know, this could be a really good fit for them. And they, uh, they did like it, but it had just hit the market. So his response was, that does look good. There's another one in that same neighborhood I'd be interested in. But I think we need to wait about 30 days or so until they realize they need to lower the price. And then I might be you know, ready to make an offer. And my response to him, which has been the way I've thought and spoke for years, is while you're waiting for them to lower the price to what you feel is a more realistic price, Somebody else with an agent like me is going to come in and write that lower price offer and negotiate a deal that once you see what it sold for on Zillow or wherever you're looking, you're going to be like, well, I would have paid that for that. Right. Why didn't you write the offer? You know, it's so true. And that's what right now is all about. We have so many options out there for everybody. And it's still low inventory. So if things start to change and when they do, we're going to miss out on this opportunity yeah. uh, that we have. So, I mean, the last thing I would say to anybody is if you're really interested in buying, the best time to buy is when you're ready. And, and that's when you want to buy. Don't worry about what's going on with the rates. Don't worry about what's going on with what, what the, these people, the naysayers are saying out there. Find a home, get into it, because I'll tell you, one thing never changes and one thing always changes. Your mortgage payment, once you get it, doesn't change. Rent always goes up. Oh, right. Always goes up. Yes. So once you get in and you're comfortable and you can find that payment, you forget about everything else and you're, you, it's your home, you own it. Because a lot of people are like, oh, well, the rates are six and a quarter right now or six and a half right now. Yeah, but when you're renting, you're paying 100% interest because 100% of that money goes away. Right. Where none of it's yours. None of it's yours. But when you buy a house, Everything besides for the interest payment goes right into your pocket. It goes right into your principal right. and pays down the loan is your money in the future. Yeah. Now, that is a great, great, a great, great, great way. <laughs> oh, it might be being Tony the Tiger here. They're great. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that was a great segment, Tony. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's, uh, so I, we're going to call this the end of episode or part one, okay, of this sit down and, uh, and go on to... Uh, to whatever part two is going to be. All right. We're going to go uh, down payment assistance program and everything else. Do you want to? Yeah, so I'll do a new intro. New intro? Okay. Okay.